a beautiful sunny day in Los Angeles, and here we are at Nick's Cafe. Yeah, I've really brought the weather with me. I'm sorry about that one. That's yeah, okay. All right, here's the game plan. Today, I'm taking you to three of the best diners in Los Angeles, all right? Nick's, another famous LA institution. Inside, they only have 25 seats around the counter. The wait is currently about 10 people deep, and I want to eat now, so we've got this table instead. That works. Wonder why no one was sitting out here today. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sad that we're not fully experiencing the ambiance, but like we've had a look around inside. It's yeah. a really cool spot. Yeah. Only 25 seats. Why is this such a popular spot? This has been here since 1948 and has pretty largely been untouched the whole time it's been here. Opened unsurprisingly by a gentleman named Nick. Nick eventually sold it to two homicide detectives, so this became the hangout for police and Department of Water and Power employees. Okay. So they kept this place going through all the hard times. Fed up of cracking cases, wanted That's to right. crack eggs instead. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this exactly. Is the place to go. Yeah, that has like its own like not a sitcom, but a TV show. Like two cops, they're sick of the hard cop lifestyle. Yeah. So in this diner, yet for some reason every week they get pulled into a case. Some murders keep happening. Just say, here's a little more coffee. It's gotta be like, man, I tell you, <laughs> this string of burglaries nobody can solve, and the guy's like, puts his hat on. Yeah. <laughs> I'd watch that, that'd be yeah. cool. They're known for doing diner classics, but elevating them, the thing we gotta try today is Nick's famous ham and eggs. Okay. So it's bone-in ham, hand-carved, brown sugar glaze. That sounds good. We have a lot of like ham, egg, and chips in mm -hmm. the UK, or gammon, egg, and chips in okay. the UK. Really interested to see like the American spin on that. Again, this has appeared in a lot of TV shows like NCIS, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Okay. Great shows, cop shows, Keeping the, the cop thing going, Keeping yeah. the cop thing going. I'm a Brooklyn Nine-Nine guy, so that's exciting. I actually love that show. It's actually very it's funny. It's really funny. <laughs> We're gonna do an order of the famous ham and eggs. Okay. And then I also wanna do the uh, huevos rancheros. Rancheros? Yeah. And then you wanted to try biscuits and gravy? Yeah, please, just biscuits and gravy. Biscuits and gravy? Any other specialties you think we should try here? I mean, you got pretty much the, the good hitters. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So yeah, we figured, yeah, yeah. Top three. Awesome, well, then we got the top yeah. three. Awesome. Well, thank you. All right, so you've been in America for 10 days now? How's Los Angeles been treating you? It's been good. I've spent a lot of time in cars. Yeah. I kind of expected that. Went yeah. to the Griffith Observatory yesterday. Oh, what'd you think? Which is pretty cool. It's yeah, cool, yeah. right? Great view. Got kind of lucky with the parking as well. No way. Rolled up. I told you, I told you. That, wow, yeah. so you guys got cavalry with the parking? You warned us off it. Kind of sorted us out. So you got a yeah. good spot. We did. That's great, like, great honestly, spot. one thing about Los Angeles mm -hmm. is getting a great spot mm -hmm. where you're going is like as celebrated as anything else you're doing yeah. that night. <laughs> when people will be like, dude, I'm parked right in front. It's like, wow. <laughs> that itself is its own reward. I'm not kidding. Cherish yeah. that. We've been really lucky Cherish so far. Cherish that. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. Hey. hey! Yeah, just put Thank it right here. Yeah, give it to him, yeah. Oh, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank <laughs> yes. Uh -huh. Dude, you can, yeah, just put it over here. Yeah, we'll split. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, You're welcome. Thank you. Oh, my God. I'm going to eat the <laughs> out of this. Are you kidding me? <laughs> All right, I can't even wait. I got to okay, try man. to piece of ham. Ah. That looks ridiculous. How big is that leg of ham? Is this, this is how big ham legs get? I this guess round? so. Maybe at the upper part. Yeah, that's this like, might, this like might thigh, be right? This might be of a person. They might have hunted a man for sport for this. And I'm all for it. Huevos rancheros, you got eggs, meat and mm -hmm. beans in there. And they're gonna have like their own like Mexican. Oh, we got like yeah. chilies underneath. Yeah, dude. So would you put this kind of in the like Tex-Mex style of, of cooking, I guess? So I would. To me, Tex-Mex is basically Mexican food that feels like it's been a bit Americanized. And that's not a, that's not a diss to it, but, mm. right? The beef is like so tender. Are you kidding me? That's so amazing. Mm -hmm. There's cheese on top. Oh my God. You get like the hard cheese. There's like some American kind of orangey cheese as well. Save some room, because this ham is no joke. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely, so they hand carve it. It has a brown sugar glaze. Mm. It's absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. I got like a real like maple syrup sweetness to yeah, that. Yeah, it's got brown sugar glaze to it. Mm -hmm. Try these hash pots. I know it just looks like regular hash pots. I will do, yeah. Okay. See wow, yeah, it's just like shreds of potato. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I personally like the shreds. Because yeah. I feel that the potato gets cooked more, it's not as like thicker as denser, so you can eat it a lot faster. Yeah. <laughs> but you get a lot of more, there's a crispy flavor on the outside. Yeah, I really love the uh, the shredded. Yeah, more room for browning. Yeah, the huevos ranchero is sensational. That's incredible. Like, very different to anything that you would find on a British cafe menu. Yeah. I will say that. Oh yeah, I gotta try the salsa yeah, as well. Salsa, there you go. Homemade salsa. We'll catch this, yeah. I mean, the ham here, you know they do it right because the signage is all pig stuff. <laughs> but yeah, there's like like the open sign is a little outline of a pig. So, I mean, you know there's something right when they're like, pig is here. Mm -hmm. Now, you got to save room because we also have briskets and gravy. Mm -hmm. Something that you have very little experience with, right? Very little experience with this. Do you know what actually is like in American style gravy? 
Uh, so there's sausage in this gravy, I should mention that. Sure. Now when they mix that with flour, it almost creates like this, I think the word is a roux, mm -hmm. like a thick sauce. Yes. And that causes for the color. There's also um, milk in there as well. Sure. So I think the best way to describe it is it's a sausage gravy. Yeah. I mean, I don't hate the concept. Yeah. And these are on biscuits, which are kind of like scones, but no, not quite. No, 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 no. There's nothing like scones. Okay. They look a lot like scones. This is so good. You're going to yeah. love it. Oh, God, you're going to love it. Right? Mm. What do you think? Yeah, not like a scum. Yeah, I know not like a scum. <laughs> I've been telling you and all of your UK counterparts for four years now. It's not a scone. It's a lot more like, like bready. I yeah, it's butterier. Uh huh. Right? Buttery and bready. Yeah. But with the gravy? Yeah, I think it needs the gravy because they of are course. quite dry on their own. But the gravy's good, really oh, flavorful. Fantastic. You do fantastic. get that like pork sausage taste from it. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the American sausage, they're like spices. I, I, I feel weird telling you like, our sausage is spicier. I don't want to, I want to imply that like it has like a heat to it. Mm. There's just more of a spice flavor to it than most of the sausages I had over in the UK. I think maybe the baseline is pretty plain in the UK. Okay. You can easily find very flavorful herby sausages, but gotcha. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever heard of the term diner lingo? No, I have not. What's that? So, diner lingo was kind of this thing where diners would abbreviate things because you just like shout orders a lot mm -hmm. so have different like nicknames for dishes or for things related to food and just kind of took off and it was popular for a while but I honestly I don't think anyone does it anymore mm -hmm. I'll give you some diner lingo I find on Wikipedia uh -huh. and you tell me what you think it is okay sure. first thing crackleberries no idea eggs <laughs> oh this one's good it uh, you asked someone to burn the British oh um, cup of tea <laughs> cup of toast coffee. English muffins sure yeah Dog soup? That doesn't sound appetizing. Coffee. Water. Yeah. Oh god. Frog sticks? Um, it's gonna make sense when I tell you what it is. And it's a bit rude. French toast sticks? Close, French fries. Mm. Hey, their thing's not mine. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Irish cherries? Oh, god. No idea. Carrots? What? Would never have gotten that one. This next one's so stupid. Nervous pudding. Hey, give me a, give me a slice of the nervous pudding. What am I talking about there? I'm trying to like, do the mental math in my head to get there. If someone's, if, someone's, if something's nervous, what is it doing? Shaking, milkshake. Okay. No, I'll call it Jello. Uh, okay. Shingles with a shimmy and a shake. By the way, I'll, I'll tell you what this is, and this is why this, I, I know why this slang didn't last. Okay, sure. so you go, give me a shingles with a shimmy and a shake. You're asking for? I don't want to eat shingles. Okay, go buttered on. toast with jam, which is way shorter. <laughs> Well, you can't give something a nickname and it be longer. No, way harder to say. That's why the Cockney rhyming <laughs> slang, he's up the apples and pears. Just stairs, yeah. just say stairs. Just say stairs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Slang doesn't work if it's longer. It's, if it takes more Period. time. Period. If it's yeah. longer, doesn't work. I gotta say, I think the perfect bite of this plate, Yeah. one of the best bites of food I've actually had on this trip so far. The entire trip? The entire trip, not just wow. the episode. Yeah, that is a fantastic dish. High praise. Mm -hmm. And do anyone watching this out of order, we haven't done the taco episode yet. <laughs> Not that I was expecting, you know, poor quality food. Yeah. But I think the preconception with places like diners, with cafes in the UK, anywhere with just like a really big menu, yeah. is that maybe they end up like stretching themselves a little bit thin. They're cooking a lot of stuff, but they're not doing it like super well. Uh -huh. However, this has kind of changed my perception on that. Good. Sensational mouthful. Yeah. One of the best things I've eaten in LA full stop so far. Yeah, uh, Yeah. I mean, I'm, like, I'm, only taking, I'm only taking it to bangers, baby. I'm only taking it to the winners. We are finding the best in Los Angeles, not the worst. Obviously, it's just the two of us having our own bro brunch. Mm -hmm. We could just stay here all day, finish our place, head back to your Airbnb, watch a little uh, Fast and Furious. Wow. Um, but unfortunately, we are contractually obligated to continue filming this very episode. And I have another diner I want to take you to. Okay, yeah, I've saved some room. I think we should go. Let's go. We're going to go check out Hollywood Boulevard. Uh, you'll see some stars on the ground. We're not getting out. Sure. Um, a little rainy for that. Yeah, you'll get the vibe, I guess. Not going to put anyone on blast, but when you walk down, you'll see some names. You're like, really, this guy? Like who? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit of who and a little bit of like, man, they're giving them to anyone, it seems like. <laughs> In theory, if That's I were rich is. enough, could I get a star? I think you also have to be like, have to be. <laughs> I'm Harry from Food Wars. I think I qualify there for a Hollywood is. face. There he is getting his own star. Doing the like superhero landing pose. Yeah, you know what's also <laughs> interesting about it is that uh, there's different categories. So movies, television, mm -hmm. recording music, broadcasting, maybe a few others. And if you excel at more than one of those, you get a separate star for it. Oh, like right. Michael Jackson has, I think, three. He definitely has two. 
possibly three. When are they adding a category for niche internet micro celebrities? That is so funny. Jesus, and that is squares on the sidewalks of Los Angeles that contain all the uh, YouTube stars that potentially could be on it. That's so funny. It could be you and me right next to like Addison Ray, dude. <laughs> I don't know who that is. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> This is the Saugus Cafe, which is the oldest restaurant in this county. Been here for over a hundred years, since 1886. That's over a hundred years, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> okay. So it was originally called the Saugus Eating House, and it was connected to a train depot across the street. You saw the train tracks when we were pulling in here. So they picked it up and moved it over here or something. And uh, anyway, what do you think of the vibe? I'm liking it. Yeah. 1886, did you say? This is, by your standards, very old. It doesn't feel super, super old, but it feels like retro. A little bit like stepping back in time. Ex-President Theodore Roosevelt ate here once, had the New York steak, and said it was splendid. Okay, Big Teddy. If it's good enough for him, that's good enough for me. Possibly in this booth. I yeah. feel like this is probably a spot that someone campaigning through this area would go. Institution, Santa Clarita, salt of the earth people eat here. That's why I took you here. I definitely am feeling salty after all the American food I've been eating. Yeah, that's right. On this trip so far. Well, I got some bad news. Oh yeah? <laughs> this might be the saltiest day today. Let's go. <laughs> So here's what I think we should get. First of all, New York steak and eggs. I mean, that's Roosevelt's order of choice. Uh, also, we did a chicken fried steak. Uh, what is that? Uh, it's fried chicken. No, it's a steak that's fried like chicken. Okay, sure. I wasn't ever sure what the chicken fried bit was referring to. You know fried chicken? I do, yes. It's that, but inside is a steak. Okay. <laughs> and then I'm thinking, well, let's get a side of bacon, side of sausage. We got eggs, so we got that covered. I was getting hash browns with the steak and eggs, probably with the chicken fried steak as well. So a pretty healthy meal, right? A couple cups like, of coffee. Yeah, it seems like a sort of normal way to start your day. Now, I wanted to give you kind of a little bit of a taste of different diners you can get in Los Angeles. Also, these three said yes. Crucially. <laughs> so if there's any other diner that may or may not involve a big boy named Bob, we asked. Bob said no. <laughs> Dieters in LA, they kind of tie in like food, culture, history, community. So yeah, they are kind of a big deal here. And I wish I could take you to more, but um, a lot of them don't have email. Yeah, it seems like an old school vibe. <laughs> yeah, you would think when you go in there, like, uh, I'm the guy from Food Tours. They're like, oh, sir, right this way. Yeah, no, but they're on. not. They're actually like, what is any of that? <laughs> I guess our closest equivalent would just be kind of like a cafe or like a greasy spoon type of vibe. Yeah. When we have the English breakfasts in London. Sure. That's probably like about as close as you're getting to a diner experience. Mm -hmm. I will say those are much more focused on breakfast. Mm -hmm. Don't tend to be open late, uh, okay. which I gather is kind of a diner thing in the US. Yeah, Somewhere some of them are 24 get, hours, yeah. Yeah, breakfast, lunch, dinner. The menus are, are very different though. You wouldn't really be seeing things like chicken fried steak mm -hmm. on the menu at a mm -hmm. greasy spoon, for example. Yeah, yeah. Just about every diner you go to, the menu is like, they got amazing breakfast and they've got killer burgers and they also have pizza. Do you like pasta? <laughs> they got that too. <laughs> uh, pad thai, maybe. If people it, are willing to buy it, we've got yeah, it. <laughs> a full bar. <laughs> do we mention Mexican food? Got that too. Okay. You know, that is a good point. They, they'll, they'll do just about anything. Sure. Yeah. I it, think that speaks, awesome. yeah. I think it speaks to the skill of the chefs who work at these places that they can just pick any cuisine and be like, yeah, I can do that and yeah. make a passable one. It's completely fine. It's funny coming to a diner having only really experienced them so far through Hollywood. Yeah, um, it's funny you mention that. I'll use Quentin Tarantino as an example. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time in diners. And then at least his first two movies, no, first three movies, have key scenes, multiple scenes that take place in a in diner, diners. right? There's yep. a lot of diner stuff in that. Diner culture really is in Hollywood a lot because I feel that that is directly related to a lot of people who make movies who live in Hollywood, got a lot of time on their hands, mm -hmm. get sick of being in the studio apartments, go to a diner to kind of clear their head and maybe write and just get all you can drink coffee and kind of hang out. Hey, oh, food's here. God. Fantastic, <laughs> yes, awesome. That is a thick Thank steak. You. Thank you. This is what I'm talking about. <laughs> if I'm doing the ordering, this whole time we're ordering bacon the way I want it. And already I could tell they did a possibly perfect job of exactly how I want it. It's crispy, it's dry, but this is how you know. Right? Mm -hmm. Right? It's almost more like a pork scratching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so talk me through what we've got here, Joe. That's the steak, those are eggs, right? Mm -hmm. Sausage, possibly perfect bacon. <laughs> you got the chicken fried steak. 
I got the like shredded hash browns. You got home fries. Home fries. Yeah. yeah. Everyone kind of does their potatoes uh, differently. This is more common. I love the shredded and just kind of like cook down the grill so as the crispy, I guess, shell. With hash browns, if you order them in the UK, yeah. it's much more likely to be the kind of discs like the McDonald's style of hash browns. Yeah. Whereas this just looks like a big kind of massive yeah, shredded they, potato yes, that they sir. cook. Yes, sir. Look at that. They shred it and they just heap it on the grill. Mm -hmm. I need you to help me with my egg literacy. Sure. In the UK, you ask for a fried egg. Yes. Maybe a poached egg. Yeah. Boiled egg. Okay. Or scrambled eggs. We have no concept of like over easy uh -huh. or sunny side up or all these things. Can you give me a quick rundown Absolutely. of what these are? I think I ordered See over easy. Right there? You did. Yeah. Sunny side up. Mm -hmm. This is the sunny side and it's up. It's pretty much you're cracking the egg on the grill, letting it cook. Mm -hmm. Over easy is this, but moments before it's ready to go, they flip it. Mm -hmm. So yolk is inside, Yep. but they cook it on both sides. But they pretty much get it to where it's almost this, and then they flip it just so like the kind of encasing it in there. So I should still have a runny yolk. Yeah, yeah, the runny yolk's inside there. of it, yeah. Oh boy, okay. this is like... I'm learning a lot. Oh man, you're gonna love it, yeah. I've never had a chicken fried steak before. I'm still slightly confused as to what it is. Gonna get my iron for the day. Damn, it's on Medium the pink one. side, still yeah. mooing. <laughs> How do you think Teddy Roosevelt wanted it cooked? I would think that he probably got it about this. This would be the Teddy Roosevelt cook. I mean, he was a world, world explorer, right? Mm hmm Not afraid of a little blood? No. -uh. How's your chicken fried steak, my man? Intriguing. <laughs> it's pretty tasty. Yeah? Yeah, it tastes good. I'm not getting much steak flavor from that. I think it also might just be because it's covered in this gravy. Yeah. And a lot of what I'm tasting is the gravy. Well, I was surprised to find out that you don't have that kind of gravy. And you guys only have breakfast gravy in general, right? Uh-uh. So I want you, when you're ready, to try some of the sausage. The sausage is great. Mm -hmm. Remember during the UK one, several times I was like, American sausage tastes different than UK sausage. You did. Has more of a distinct spice flavor to it. That's not a glass of wine. Just eat it. <laughs> What sausage in the UK tastes like? It tastes closer to that. This, I don't mean this in a bad way. Mm -hmm. McDonald's breakfast sausage? Yeah, they, so of course, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's like very, very similar flavor palette to mm -hmm. that. And right, so you get the bread, you dip it in the yolk, get it going. Boom, there you go, yeah, that's a perfect egg. I think we should swap bites of steaks. Oh well. A1 steak sauce, almost like an American version of HP sauce, right? Like kind of savory, Yes, vinegary. but not, I mean, I've had both. They're not very close. Well, you'll okay. find out in a second. I'll try a little bit. No. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Mm. It's got a tang to it, mm -hmm. right? It is the premier steak sauce. Super popular. Been around since the 80s. It's like, it's if you go to a place that serves steak, you're, there's going to be A1 on the table. Mm -hmm. No question. Absolutely love A1. Yeah, I like that, actually. I actually don't think it's got as strong a taste as HP sauce, but I quite like that because I find HP can really overwhelm meats yeah. sometimes. Uh -huh. I guarantee that's in your, uh, how your grocery stores have like a, an American aisle. Mm-hmm. Next to the fluff and the gushers, I guarantee there's an A1, <laughs> the uh, one. bottle of A1, so probably not too hard to find. I will say, like, it's a lot of food. Is it common to eat, like, a diner for yeah, breakfast? Yeah, 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 it's very common. Yeah. Big plate of food. You know, they do feed you at a diner. And they're also giving a lot of bread, a lot of meat, and a lot of potatoes, which is like sleeping pill on top of sleeping pill on sleeping <laughs> pill, for me, personally. I don't eat a ton of potatoes and bread and meat, and I'm like, let's get this day started. I ate that, and I'm like, all right. Back to bed. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> it's hibernation season, so mm -hmm. other people apparently can eat this well and then go work. I certainly can't. So for me, I only really hit the diners on the weekends or late at night. That makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Another thing I've seen in films, yeah. TV, yeah. free refills all the time. All the time. Is that a thing? It's rare to have uh, less than half a, half a cup of coffee mm -hmm. at your table if you're still eating. They'll keep filling up, keep filling up, keep filling it up. I want to point out that we're filming and we're isolated ourselves. Yeah. And she was coming by and then we yeah. kind of like, we're like, no, 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 no. <laughs> so that's no criticism on this place. Normally, it would be overflowing with coffee, which is perfect for me because I can't drink enough of it. It's not really a thing in the UK. Like in general, even places with soda machines, it's yeah. usually accepted that you just get one. And Why that's is that? It. I don't really know. I guess from their perspective, it's like such a small cost, right? to just keep filling you up with like filter coffee. It's gonna yeah. cost them pennies. Yeah, nothing. And might keep you around for like a bit longer and you yeah. might order more food, so. I don't that think it's sense. that. I think it's no. just part of the experience of like always having a hot cup of coffee. Okay. That's what I think. Just a nice, a nice yeah, gesture. I don't think, I don't think they're like, I don't think it's a loss leader, the coffee. <laughs> if there were a place in the UK that just keeps filling up your tea, then yeah. I would be there all the time. They, they, they wouldn't just give you like another like pot of hot water, not even like a new bag, just like more water? Maybe a few places, but for the most part, if you order a beverage, you get that one cup, and then if you want another one, you have to order another cup and pay for it. 
Yeah. I don't know. That sounds kind of rude, to be honest. <laughs> kind of rude. All right. I could sit here, like you say, all day, mm -hmm. get coffee refills, yeah. eat more and more, mm -hmm. but I think we have more spots to hit, right? Yeah, let's go. People sometimes still doubt the fact that we do all these in one day. Oh, really? Which we definitely do. Yeah. Uh, and it really takes its toll by the end if you are putting all the food away. Yeah, I'm a little beat to be honest. Oh, God. Yeah. I think that's why they give you free unlimited coffee refills, because yeah. otherwise you'd just be asleep at the table. Right? I don't even eat like mm -hmm. this and then goes to work, man. We're, <laughs> I'm, I'm beat. Oy. We're at Norm's, right? I mean, you wanted a neighborhoody place. This is like in the heart of it. We had to drive through Beverly Hills to get here, right? I think this is West Hollywood. Yeah. Obviously, it's packed. But yes, menu's looking real nice. The chat is nice. The chat's good. You got yeah. good chat. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. The banter I'm getting from you're, this menu. You're, crack, you're cracking on with this yeah, menu. I'm cracking on with this menu <laughs> for sure. Uh, what do you think? I like the vibe in here. They're churning out the pancakes here. But like you say, it's like a family vibe. The waitress just came over and was like addressing the next family on the next table by name. Like they know each other here. Oh, nice. It's a welcome, a welcoming spot. Interesting thing about Norm's that we're doing this now, this is actually their 75th anniversary. They've been going for a long time. Originally founded by a used car salesman named Norm. They had 23 locations and this is the oldest surviving one. 23 locations is quite a lot. Popular yeah, spot, right? Yeah. This was declared an LA historical monument partially because of its architecture. And I may be pronouncing this wrong, but there's a type of architecture that's very popular in diners called, I believe it's Guji architecture, possibly Googie. It's the word Google, but replaced the L with an I. Perfect. It's very like car focused, space age, but like Jetson era yeah. looking, what the past that the future was gonna look like. It was a style that really boomed in the 50s and 60s, right? So then they were like, this is the future. Now we're like, oh, it's kitschy, it's the past. Go figure, right? But this has that look for it. And a lot of the Norm's restaurants were designed to look like car dealerships. Norm was a car dealer. There you go. Paying homage uh, to his origins. Okay. Gonna get you some pancakes. I would love some pancakes. Get I feel like that's an uh, American breakfast staple that we haven't really had yet. Yeah. How often would you say you have pancakes in the UK? Not very often. A lot of people seem to confine it to one day of the year Why? in the UK. What? We have this thing, you know Shrove Tuesday? No. It's a Christian thing. What is it? It's like part of the Easter festivities. It comes before Ash Wednesday, Shrove Tuesday. Shrove. Shrove. Uh, what, what Shrove mean? I don't know exactly what Shrove means, uh -huh. but the idea of the day is that you kind of use up all of the like rich foods in your house before Lent. That, that, actually, that makes perfect sense. Somehow, I don't know exactly how, this translated itself into pancake day. So you can't have pancakes on Lent? I think traditionally what you were, you were giving up a lot of stuff. It was like, I'm going to give up like all nice food. Oh, so and pancakes were like the treat. So let's fill up on yeah. pancakes so you can't have them for a month. Pancakes is like, we got loads of like eggs left over. We got to get rid of them all before Lent starts. Oh yeah, okay. What do we do? Chuck them with some pancakes. But all that goes to say, pancakes, not as much of a staple in the British diet. Okay. And definitely not found on typical breakfast menus. That's wild. Yeah. Well, you can get, well, you should get pancakes here. No, we haven't, we haven't had them yet, have we? No, we have not. I'm definitely very keen. Definitely got to have American pancakes, too. Mm -hmm. That's like big breakfast 101. Oh, yeah. I'm thinking we're going to get the lumberjack breakfast. Got a little bit of everything, including pancakes. We'll also uh, split a meatloaf. The meatloaf here is supposed to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Also, I might throw a little waffle in the mix. Anything else? No, that sounds pretty good. I don't think I've ever had meatloaf before. So what? I'm excited for it's not a commonly oh, eaten thing wow. in the UK, I know. Man, you're in for a treat. I feel like with that, with the breakfast, with the pancakes and the waffle, we're hitting all the boxes I expect from a typical American diner. So that sounds good to me. We're eating. Do you want to get a couple of milkshakes? Oh yeah, we're in a diner, we should get milkshakes. One vanilla milkshake for your boy, please. So you're going to get vanilla? I would love vanilla, I'm yeah. I'm probably going to get strawberry. That's fine. Do you, Joe? Thank you. One thing I love is that you guys have this chef's sampler platter on yeah. the menu. The chef, it's chef recommended. Apparently so, but it's basically just a array of fried stuff. Yeah, the chef really likes his fried foods. <laughs> we love them too in the UK. Yeah. We would call this usually British tapas. <laughs> it's become like a sort of cult thing why, where you why? just get like a but just a buffet of beige foods basically yeah fry a bunch of stuff up you have like chips in there your onion rings your mozzarella sticks chicken nuggets various other bits there you go oh, thank, thank you very much still not used to these free refills <laughs> The 24-7 eatery yeah. is not that much of a thing in the UK, and I'm kind of sad because... Why is that? I don't know. I'm not really sure. There are like people who are awake at that hour, and I'm sure would benefit from a space like this. I would think that it's not as common because of the cost of operations. Because I'm also thinking, whenever you see a late-night spot portrayed in film and television, sure. 
one key element is that no one's in there. Sure. <laughs> and even though it is kind of an interesting vibe to be one of the only four people at a diner or two in the morning, I don't know how much that waitress has been there for several hours is making off of that uh, yeah. dollar cup of coffee you're nursing. <laughs> so it's probably too expensive? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, they're still doing it, so they're making it work. Yeah, it must work on some level. I, just, I don't know. I just think it's cool to have like a space where, yeah. you know, if you want to get out of the apartment at any hour, you can. Come to your diner, get a pretty cheap and affordable meal, free refills. Oh man, the milkshakes are here. Vanilla? Yep. Thank you. And strawberry. Love now, that. So you get like a little refill. You get the extra, right? In the cup. Isn't that nice? Amazing. Wow, this is a lot. To look in here, I mean, this is like, this is enough for two, I think. Mm hmm. That's very good. How's that one? Very tasty. No good? I mean, it's basically just vanilla ice cream in a glass, so can't go too far wrong. Show on the strawberry, man, that's fantastic. You know it's good when it just like doesn't go back down oh, the yeah, straw. Oh yeah, look at that. It just stays in the Can't straw. Can't confirm it's a thickness. <laughs> I think the closest we came to having diners in the UK is this place called Little Chef. Little Chef. Which was this chain of basically like highway side restaurants yeah. that would do kind of American diner style food. So you can get like a full English with the pancakes. Wow. Which was rare. A full English breakfast with pancakes? Yeah. Oh my God. Well, like the American or whatever it was that sure, kind sure, of would sure. come with all the extra you stuff. You called it the American. Yeah. I think they've actually closed down now, which is kind of sad, because that was always a highlight of like a little family road trip when I was younger was a little chef breakfast. And a little but chef. That's, that's about as close as we've come to having diners. So it's a UK. chain. It was a chain, okay. yeah. This is also a chain, right? Uh, I think in theory you can call it a chain. I think it's mostly just in this area. When people say chain, I think like multiple states, multiple cities. The only like chains I can think of are like IHOP or Denny's and eh. I mean, I, I like this better than those places. I don't want to disparage those places, but I would think that Norm's has a specific Los Angeles je ne sais quoi that you're not going to get at those big corporate chains. Personally, I feel. Hey, hey thank you. That's in this. Beautiful. Thanks, really good. Wow, dude. Before I embarrass myself, can I just check that this is in fact maple syrup? Yes, that is, okay, I don't know if it's good. maple syrup, but it is syrup. Because like seeing a jug like this on a table in the UK, not super common. What I else thought, do you think it would be? I was like, is this maybe honey to put in your tea? No, definitely or not. Or is this like cooking oil for some reason? You guys love putting corn syrup on everything. You never quite know, but. Well, oh, take it easy. Oh, yeah. This, the, is, this is how we the, do it in America. The size of these things, Yeah, man. that's good, right? They are huge. That's yeah, a lot. They're obviously American pancakes, so they're like kind of thick and fluffy. Yeah. I mean, I'm excited to eat them. I went ahead with something a little more time appropriate. I got the meat. Love to do a bacon on it. Happy to see that. And you notice these mashed potatoes, they kind of like made a little divot for the gravy. Yeah. Also, I like that that gravy looks more like our gravy. I feel yeah, more they got, at Oh, home and they got here. gravy in the meatloaf. I mean, this more is familiar. just, I mean, come on. How great what does this look? What is meatloaf exactly? Because I'm still not quite sure. Ground beef. Mm -hmm. with other like seasonings and spices okay. and also I think they use like egg to kind of keep it all together sure and it's just everyone's discretion of what it is but it is eventually looks like a big log of meat and you just kind of cut it but I, I, know, I know it's got like toppings on here but if you kind of see it is like of ground beef consistency yeah. okay. kind of like a giant meatball tubular yeah meatball. that's a good way of putting it uh -huh. I don't really taste like one because like the gravy's different and the spices but yeah a little bit like that I'm gonna go in for some pancakes straight away because I'm excited and the this meatloaf is there awesome, as well. dude. You can get a lot more gravy. Um, this is where it's at, dude. This is where it's at. The butter on here, like quite salty, works really well with the maple syrup. It's a good mix, mm -hmm. right? Salt and sweet, man. Salt and sweet. Give me a little, uh, yeah, I'll yeah, take yeah. a little slice of meatloaf. You bet. Your first meatloaf experience. It's not exactly like a meatball, but pretty close to it. Yeah. You see, like the mushrooms, how that would go with it. A bacon is is, a, is always welcome on on the uh, yeah. on anything, but the gravy is really good actually. That's a lot closer to what I would associate with like a British style gravy. We, we You'd have, have that kind of with. We your have roast lots dinner. of different gravies here in the United States. Yeah. Almost everything is a classic menu item you can find just about anywhere. But this is so good. This is like really really good. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm I'm a big fan of all of this. Let's try some breakfast staples because yep. I want like a basis of comparison as well. See the bacon? Maybe not quite as cremated crispy as you like it, but this is more my speed. Oh yeah, it's still pretty crispy. Fantastic bacon. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, sausage is a good litmus test too. Mm -hmm. Man, Norm's just fantastic, huh? I'm impressed, man, I gotta say. This is actually slightly less McDonald's vibes and more like just British, like chipolata vibes, okay. All I right. would say. Yeah. We have a sort of sub-genre of sausage called chipolatas. Kind of like this. Food's coming in fast, so get a load of this strawberry waffle. I mean, this is only gonna be amazing. There's no way this waffle isn't delicious. Look at that, man. 
where do waffles sit in the kind of pantheon of like baked desserts for breakfast? Are they kind of up there with pancakes for you? I can't say, man. It's it's it's. Uh, I can go either way any day. I feel like pancakes are a little bit. I think a little bit more common, just because you can cook them on the same grill you're cooking everything else with. Sure. Yeah, when it comes out, still a little bit warm. The strawberry mixture they've got in there is delicious. So whipped cream is good. That would kill with a scoop of ice cream. Well, this is fantastic, and I would love to eat all of this, but I feel like I'm gonna burst. But we got to figure out which we think was the best today, run it down. First of all, Nyx. Nyx was great. Vibe in there was lovely. Yeah. I enjoyed the kind of chaos and the small environment once you're in there. Yeah. Sat on the bar, you don't know who you're going to be sat next to. You could be talking to anyone. Again, you're having your kind of like Hollywood main character moment while you're eating your very, very tasty food. I like the little spin so putting on it. Again, still thinking about those huevos rancheros. Thought they were excellent. Yeah, Saugus. Mm -hmm. What'd you think? I was really impressed by Saugus. I think the quality of the food, A, was excellent. Your steak particularly, I was like, yeah, wow. right. I could not believe that was coming from a diner of yeah, all places. Right, yeah. That was like a steakhouse meal yeah. but at a diner. The vibe in there was cool. Again, felt very old school. Slightly on what I would say like the quieter side maybe. I think that's a place where you would go take like a book or go and write your screenplay while you're getting your refills, a free coffee, yeah, 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 eat yeah. your food. But I did really like it. Okay. And then we come to, uh, to Norm's here. Yeah, Norm's has really impressed me, I'm going to be honest. I've really enjoyed it here. I think the kind of approachability and affordability is really nice because mm -hmm. LA is an expensive city. Mm -hmm. This is somewhere where if I stayed here, I would probably be coming like most days, to be yeah. honest. Because you know what you're going to get. It's going to be reliable, it's going to be tasty, it's going to be cheap, it's going to be fast. And everything, yeah, yeah everything, literally everything we ate here was amazing. Yeah. I love it. Really good. And I think. Judging from what you've said and just kind of from what we've experienced today, yeah. I think this is really representative of the general LA diner experience. I would agree with you on that. Of course, we loved all three. We did. But if you had to pick one, which would be the one you pick? My decision is kind of coming more down to the vibe, I think, okay. rather than the food, because the food at all of them has been really good. Okay. And I would happily eat at any of them again. What was your favorite vibe? I think. Norm's might actually be my favorite, man. Number one. If I were to recommend this to a friend who wanted an authentic LA diner experience, yeah. this is it. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's a chain, but it's still got the heart. It's got the history. It's been here for so long. Yeah. The people in here are so friendly. Yeah. The food is excellent. It's yeah. quick. It's tasty. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't you know feel like you're you almost like in a, a movie about, that takes place in a diner. Yes. They kind of feel that. Yeah. yeah, yeah There's yeah. going to be like a shootout involving Sam L. Jackson over there somewhere any minute now. And we're going to be here eating delicious pancakes and eggs. How about you, Joe? Would you agree? This is fantastic. I loved everything here. But I was really blown away by the food at Nick's. But it's just different. Yeah. But also... Oh, he's, he's really struggling here. Um, man, you're a man divided. Look, I'm going to say Nick's sure. with a caveat is that these two places are not very similar. Mm -hmm. And both are fantastic. This was so good. I love this. I think what did it for me with Nick's is the elevation of the food dishes that we had. I guess I just like the uniqueness of Nick's, but this, I mean, everything here is such top quality. I love it too. So uh, I'm just gonna go Nick's, but literally by like like a pimple on a nose, just going through like a photo finish. It's a photo, like, here's, 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 here's. Nick's. Norms. Nick's. Yeah. Norms. That's how, that's how close it is. My interpretation of the verdict yeah. is that, you know, you're an Angelino, you've lived here for a while now. You've been to your fair share of diners. That's true. So I guess them doing things slightly differently, putting an elevated spin on that's it. That's a very good point. For you is like, oh, this is new. This is exciting. Yeah. Whereas honestly, for me, like I've not been to many diners, first time in LA. And this for me is like everything that I imagined and everything I wanted a diner to be. And you got it. And I got it right here. So it's like when I went to Witherspoons, and I'm like, this is the best. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't imagine anyone not liking this. Is that what it's like? Exactly like okay, that. Okay, I'm yeah. not comparing this place to Spoons whatsoever. <laughs> Please don't come at me, I was just joking. I feel like if someone comes here and they're like, I just want the authentic diner experience that I see in TV and movies, yeah. they absolutely have to come to Norms. Yeah. I love diners. I do think they are distinct from the UK calf experience. Okay. And I would quite like to see more of them in the UK. Fantastic, my guy. Mm -hmm. Are there any like behind the scenes questions from food tours that you get a lot? No. No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> That's that then. <laughs>